Hey guys, I made this little project a little while ago where I made a material UI form and then you would submit the form and uh, it would insert into the table down below. Now I got a request to show you guys how to edit and delete rows from this. So real quick, let me demo what the functionality it has. So here's me just typing random stuff in and then I can hit submit and it comes down here. So what we're gonna be adding today to this is a little icon here to edit and another icon here to delete uh, the rows that we don't care about. Now, if you wanna get this code, it's up here on GitHub and I'm gonna be starting from um, this code right here. Um, we'll get to the text fields in a little bit, but first let's add two icons here and uh, here. So if we come over here to Material UI, they have a nice little set of SVG icons that we're going to be using. And the way it works is we just tell them the path, the icon we want, and we show them here. So if we come over here to Material Icons, uh, these are the icons that we can use. So I'm just going to search for an edit one because that's what we'd like to use. Um, if we scroll down here, there's a nice one at the bottom. And the way this works is notice the category image and the name edit we're going to be using that to import. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to come over here. So here's the code. I'm in Visual Studio Code right now. And then I have app.js open, which is our main file, which um, renders the form and table component. If I come over here into my table component, this is where we're going to be adding the bulk of our stuff. So I want to add two icons to my table. Um, the first is an edit icon. and Remember how I said that it was in the image um, category and then right here the name of it is called edit. So you need to remember that because that's how you import it. And then I want to grab one more icon and I want to make a trash can icon or a delete icon. So I'm just going to search for that. And we get this nice trash can and that's from action. So, action, delete. Okay, so now I'm going to add these two icons in. And let me name this a different icon. So, trash icon. And then we're going to come down here. So, here's our little row right here. So, we're rendering all our columns. And we just want to render a edit icon as well. And a trash can item. Now the way this works is we need to wrap it in a table row column. So table row column. And we're going to wrap both of them in it. And we just need to make sure to close the tags. Okay. So because we added two more table rows, we need to add two more headers here. Um, you can put the word um, edit if you want to. I'm just going to leave them blank. So table header column and paste that in. Okay, so now let's just make sure that our icons render okay when we create. So I'll paste that in. And we see our two icons here, perfect. So now what I wanna do is be able to click on this and click on this and be able to delete and edit. Now when I click on this, you'll notice this little checkbox thing comes up and that's kind of annoying. We don't really want that. We just want to be able to click on the icons. So we can get rid of that by coming over here. And there is a property on the table row called selectable. And we're just going to say false. And instead, we are going to add onClick handlers to our icons. So onClick1 and onClick2. So Whenever we click the trash can icon, we'd like to um, handle remove. So we want to remove um, that row from the table. And we just need to say which um, index we want to remove. So we're going to pass in i, which is the index in our data. And so this is a function we need to pass in here so we can use it. So handle remove. We're going to make this function in a minute. And then for editing icons, whenever we click on it, what we want to do is start editing the row. And how I think we're going to handle this is instead of just rendering text, we'll actually render text fields here. Um, so we need to know which row we're editing. So I'm going to say start editing 
and I'm going to pass the index of what we're going to start editing. So we need to create a function called start editing, which we're going to pass in here and call and just tell it we want to start editing this row. Now we need to keep track of which row we're editing. So I'm going to say edit IDX. So this is going to be the row we're currently editing. Um, and then what we want to do is I'm going to create this into a regular function. So we're going to return We'll use curly braces because what I want to do is up, sit up here say const currently editing is equal to edit idx triple equals i. So we'll be implementing these things but what edit idx will stand for is the index that we're editing. So if we're currently on that index we know we're uh, editing this row. So we need to set up um, a little ternary operator here saying currently editing and if we're currently editing this we don't want to display just the name we want to display a text field so a text field otherwise we want to display just the text so for the text field that's when we want to come over here to material UI and I'm just going to come over here to text fields and we're going to add one in oh there we go so come over here, we're going to grab that import and paste it in here. Now for our text field, I think we just need to give it a, a name. Um, looks like they give it an ID. I'm just going to give it a name. Name, and the name of it is going to be whatever the prop is. So if it's uh, for example, name or username or email, whatever that's going to be. And then we need to handle the change. So on change, whenever we're typing, we need to actually change the data in our state. So we need to create a function called handle change. And I'm going to pass that handle change function into our on change over here. So handle change. Give this a save so it reformatted stuff, that's okay. And then our value right here, so we need to set the value of our text field. The value of it is going to be the same text that we would display here. So x.y.prop. Okay, so now how this is working is we're going to start editing and we're going to show this thing here. Otherwise, when we finish editing, we want to show just the text. So what I want to do is have like a stop editing button here. So I want to find another icon and I'm going to see if we can just get like a check mark. Um, yep, let's use this navigation check. That looks pretty good. So navigation check. This is going to be a check icon. And navigation check. So instead of showing um, the edit icon, if we're already editing, we'll show the check mark. So we're going to say currently editing. If we are, then we're going to show the check icon. Otherwise, we'll show our uh, edit icon. And here we want to stop editing, right? So we're going to say stop editing. And so that's a function we have to pass in here as well. Stop editing. Okay, cool. So, and we need to add a comma there. So these four functions and props we need to pass into this row. So right here when we're creating our row, we want to pass them in. So paste those in. And then these we're all going to get from our props up here. So I'm going to say comma, paste those in as well. So now in our app we need to pass in a handle remove, start editing, stop editing, handle change, and then edit IDX. All these things. So let's head over to our app and then we're going to pass it to our table. And we're just going to go one at a time. Okay, so handle remove. We're going to call this this dot handle remove. And then our handle remove function up here. 
we're gonna say handle remove and remember how we're passing um, the index of which one we'd like to remove so we'll have I right here and we're gonna say this dot set state and all we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this index from our data now to this dot set state we can actually pass in a function like this grabbing our current state and then I can say data is equal to state dot data and then we're gonna say filter and we're gonna be looking at x comma i and as long as i is not equal to and I'm gonna call this j because we have a name conflict as long as it's not equal to i we're good alright so if you've ever seen and let me just comment this stuff down here below so this can save in auto format um, doesn't like the comments um, let's just pass in emptiness for now and then we're gonna fill these guys in okay and do we have our curly braces yep this looks good So what, are, what is happening here? So first, if you haven't seen state um, arrow function, you've probably, this looks kind of unfamiliar. This is equivalent to doing this, um, just returning, oops, just passing this guy a uh, object and then using this dot state. So this probably looks more familiar um, the reason why you use the function here above is just so it is local and we're not basically using the global this right here to access it we're using it in our function in case things change or whatnot um, and so all we're saying is we're filtering out we're looking so the first thing this is going to be each row instead of calling this X we could call this row and the second field to filter is um, the index so we're just making sure the index doesn't match this. Um, so what filter does, if it says if it, this condition does not match, um, it keeps it in. If it does match, um, it throws it out. Or, sorry, I think I said that backwards. Um, so what we're doing is if I, if these match, then we throw it out, otherwise we keep it. Basically we're filtering out, right? We're filtering where this guy um, is equal to this guy and the way we say that is we want to keep everything that's not equal alright and I don't know why we're getting red lines here unexpected token um, is it because I'm not yeah I think I'm using one too many yeah parentheses there we go so the next thing is start editing so for this, I want to add a edit IDX in our state so we know which one we are editing. So I'm going to say negative one for now. And let's do a comma there. And I'm going to pass that into this.state.editIDX. So currently we're not editing anything. That's why we have a negative one. So to start editing, we're going to create a function here called start editing. And remember how we're passing in um, I here so the index and we're just gonna pass that in so this dot set state we're gonna set um, edit IDX equal to I and then here we'll pass that in so this dot start editing so to start editing we just set the IDX equal to whatever we want I to be which we pass in and then handle change is a little bit more complicated so we'll do that one last Let's do stop editing real quick because that one's really easy. This dot stop editing. Create a function for it up here. Stop editing. And we're just going to say this dot set state. Edit IDX is equal to negative one. So that means we just stop editing. All right, now let's do handle change. This one's a little bit more complicated. Um, so Let's come back over to our table real quick. Handle change 
is a little bit more complicated than just passing in like this. So on change gives us an event handler back. So we know our event handler tells us what the new text that we should update the state with, but we don't know the index of the row and we don't know um, inside of the row whether we're updating the username or the email or the password. So we're gonna pass in y.prop. That'll tell us what field we're, at, we're changing. And then at the end, we're gonna pass in um, i so we know which um, index we're in. So we know which one to update. So then our app over here, uh, our handle change, we'll pass that in here, this.handle change. We're gonna have an event listener here. Here we're gonna have the name, um, prop name. And then here we're gonna have, or we should say, we should give this a better name. We'll just call this name. That's the name of the field of the row that we're changing. And here is gonna be the index. So we're gonna do this dot set state and like I was doing before we're going to use this state function because we want to use our current data and I'm just going to get the value out of e.target so value is equal to oops value is equal to what we just typed into the text field and we're going to say data here and we're going to say state.data and we're going to do a mapping so we're going to take each row in the current index, which is j, and we're going to say j is equal to i. So when it's equal, we have to change this row, otherwise we just return the current row. So if this is the current row that we're changing, because we know that because it's equal to i that we're getting here, um, we're going to return a new object. We're going to return everything row has. And then we're going to say whatever the value of name is. So name could be username, email. We set that to our new value. And give that a save. So we're mapping over our data. Whenever we hit the row that we've just changed, um, we're going to keep all the values that are there and overwrite the one value that we pass in with name and setting its value. OK, let's see this in action. Let's see if we have any errors. doesn't look like we're getting any errors. I'm going to say. Put in some data here and hit submit. So we see our stuff here. So now when I hit this pencil, remember edit mode will turn on um, and it will pass in the row we want to edit and we should get text fields. So click on that. We get our text fields that pop up and then here I can start typing and it'll know what field we're changing based on uh, the passing the first name, last name, and then the index of the row. Then we can hit this button to save it. Notice it saves in the changes. Um, let's try this with a couple other rows. Make sure this doesn't work for just one. Okay, so let's try editing this guy. Change the email, give that a plus. Now we're not doing any validation on this anymore. So for example, if I got rid of the at sign, they could do that. Um, and now let's hit the trash can and we remove rows. So cool. So that is how you add um, edit and delete features to the rows of our table. I hope that was helpful. And let me know if you had any trouble implementing this. Uh, I'm going to put this code on GitHub so you can check it out and make sure your code matches if you have trouble getting this set up. Um, it does get quite complicated with this handle change um, and passing in all the stuff to our table. There's a lot going on here. But as you can see, it gets a pretty cool result. Um, cool little addition to this if you wanted to add more is to actually validate whenever they edit and throw an error if they uh, validate incorrectly. Uh, if they do bad like we remove the at sign. So that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching